Today, behind the mystery, a rare primary immunodeficiency. We're going to learn more from Dr. Nicholas Hartog, but first, let's meet Tyler, who at 13 years old was one of the first patients to be diagnosed with this disease. Let's go behind the mystery of APDS. Growing up, I didn't really think I'd make it very far. Didn't plan for a lot of things in my future, like going to college, because I didn't think I'd have a future to plan for. When I was young, I didn't really have a day where I wasn't sick, and I always thought that was normal, because I didn't have any other perception of what else there was. Sometimes I'd be hospitalized a month at a time. Often it was pneumonia getting so bad I could barely breathe properly. I had a massive amount of sinus infections. I ended up having so many ear infections, I had to have 20 sets of ear tubes put in. There were a lot of things I was worried about when it came to the disease growing up, uh, and it wasn't just about getting sick. My liver and spleen both swelled up so big that they both went past my rib cage. I couldn't even reach down to grab something without feeling like a sharp jab. I had lymph node growths on the side of my neck and face. Uh, even in their normal state, they would sit there the size of golf balls, but in times of high stress or pain, they would spike in swelling uh, to almost the size of oranges as they would block my airways. Every night, I would have to take 11 pills, and every morning I would have to take nine. And it was a constant reminder that I wasn't able to live a normal life. APDS is a genetic immunologic condition that can have a severe impact on patients' lives and does have the potential to be life-threatening in many patients. It was first described in 2013, and before then, we did not know what it was or that it existed. In the, the condition, there's a protein, and when that protein gets overactivated, it causes a lack of regulation in the immune system, causing an immune deficiency and also some immune dysregulation or autoimmune disease. Patients with APDS can present really at any age. Their symptoms can start uh, very early on in life, under the age of one. Most commonly, that's going to be sinus infections, ear infections, lung infections that are out of proportion to normal. Often patients with APDS do suffer and struggle with a diagnostic delay. With that diagnostic delay, we can have treatment that doesn't happen, we can have end organ damage that happen, and other manifestations that build up that may have been able to be treated or prevented had we had the most accurate diagnosis a little sooner. The issues over the years changed a lot. I ended up having joint pains. I ended up having issues breathing, both for my asthma and growths on my lungs. When I was 10, I realized I had spent a year total of my life in hospital rooms at that point. Having to go through test after test, surgery after surgery, different biopsies, different scopes, trying to understand these causes. The way doctors ended up trying to manage what was happening to me was mainly focused on the individual symptoms and not knowing all the answers and how to treat the disease meant I was suffering through the treatment a lot of the time. So it felt like a lose-lose situation no matter what I did. Patients with APDS present with a wide variety of illnesses and wide variety of manifestations. And even within a family with the same genetic makeup and same genetic defect, they can look a lot different and present in many different ways. We have an immune deficiency side of things where you have a susceptibility to certain infections, sinus infections, ear infections, certain viral infections called herpes virus infections and pneumonias. In addition to the infection, the more autoimmune side of things can include enlarged lymph nodes, enlarged liver and spleen. It can include lymphoma. 
some inflammatory GI conditions like inflammatory bowel disease, chronic diarrhea. Outside of infections and outside of autoimmunity, patients can also present with developmental delay and that can be part of the whole entire picture. With APDS being discovered just 10 years ago, we have our list of manifestations and ways that patients have presented that we look for, but there are still new things being discovered and still new manifestations that we're noticing and that are being described in the literature each and every year. As a kid, I was really limited on what kind of things I could do socially and in my school life uh, because I was constantly afraid of getting sick. And the one school field trip I actually got to go on, I got horribly sick and had to leave early. My family was a huge part of getting me through everything, honestly, in that anything I was going through, they were through it with me. And they, they gave me that support to, to find answers. A pivotal moment happened when I was 13. Uh, our main doctor ended up referring us to NIH's Undiagnosed Disease Program. And that's when they started doing genetic testing to try to find the answers. The genetic testing showed the genetic variant that caused APDS, and I was diagnosed with it. They then searched genetic records trying to find other cases. 10 other people were diagnosed, including my sister. When we return, how Tyler's sister dealt with the shock of her own APDS diagnosis. We'll be right back. APDS can be diagnosed and suggested based on a person's own presentation, family history, laboratory testing, and then eventually by genetic testing. At times, we can do a single gene test or do something called whole exome sequencing where we look at all the genes in your body. One thing we need to do is to make sure that the genetic panel that's tested includes the genes that cause APDS. If you had genetic testing done prior to 2017, many commercial labs did not include those genes in their analysis and it may have been missed simply because they didn't test for it at that time. I thought I was the only one with APDS because it showed up on no tests, no doctor had any prior information regarding it. My relief at finally finding out what was the cause of everything was overshadowed by this dread of understanding that there will be more people going through what I've been through. And it had secondary shocks in finding out my sister had it as well. So I was always considered to be the healthy child compared to my brother. When I ended up getting diagnosed shortly after him, it brought a lot of anxiety of not knowing what was going to happen next. I didn't show a lot of like immune system issues early on, so it was never in anybody's mind that I had the same thing as Tyler. As a child, I experienced a lot of the pain. I was more or less on the side of muscle issues, joint issues, sinuses, or my throat, where I ended up choking on things even when I was just trying to eat something simple. Along with that, I had my adenoids taken out three separate times. Having all of the symptoms come into play, realizing that there was an actual answer behind it was pretty difficult. I fought every step of the way to be able to get to where I am today. Seeing Tyler go through so many challenges with his health when he was younger was very frustrating because it would always be multiple things going on at once. When we found out that Caitlin also had APDS, it was a surprise. She had always been my healthier one, but compared to other kids, she was still sicker than what they would have been. Being a caregiver to two children with APDS, uh, can be very tiresome. You need to reach out and let people in and let people help. My husband is my support, whether I'm crying or I'm happy. He's the first one I go to. The advice I'd give to parents going through everything with APDS is you are their advocate. You know your children. You know that if the doctor's saying something that's wrong, that's by the book, your kid may not follow that book. Keep looking, keep fighting, and just advocate for them. Once we make the diagnosis and we move to treatment, 
The treatment's really going to be based on the individual person's presentation. This can include immunoglobulin replacement therapy, mTOR inhibitors, immune suppressive agents, antibiotics, or antivirals to treat and prevent infections. In 2023, the FDA did approve treatment for adult and pediatric APDS patients 12 years of age and older, and really can be a lot of other treatments too, just based on the individual person. I would recommend seeking out physicians and centers who do have experience and are experts in treating APDS. That way you are allowing yourself to get cutting edge treatment and you're allowing yourself to make sure all of the very difficult disease manifestations are optimized to the best of our ability. As my symptoms were more managed and I started to finally feel better, it gave me greater hope for the future I now had. I started enjoying a lot of things I couldn't before. I went from a couch potato to walking 5Ks, and there was just this joy in the access to it, like just being able to go on a walk without having an asthma attack for that first time. Being able to pursue whatever I wanted in the ways I wanted. I ended up going to college. I was there for everything. I ended up pushing forward and getting a career in game design. I've been able to reach a lot of my goals I've had, and there, there's a joy in being able to just try to figure things out now, just like any other 20-year-old, in, in actually having a future to be uncertain about. <laughs> If you or someone you know believes they have APDS, visit allaboutapds.com. And of course, you can always visit our website, thebouncingact.com. We'll be back right after this.